Right. Today I'm test riding the ZZR 1400. Because why not? I can tell you instantly, very low down, but it's just turbine smooth. Like, you've got no idea. I recommend one of these to anyone. Uh, I was going to say that mirror's a bit shit. Actually, it's really easy to move, but I mean the position of it. That one's fine. That one's ass. Oh, yes. I think I'm in, th yeah, I'm in third gear. I've got it full power. Just no effort at all. It, it just pulls. One thing I will say is I wish I'd worn a longer shirt because this riding position is just like exposing my ass and lower back. Well, I suppose one more like lower back than my ass. This is the biggest motorcycle I've ever ridden. Um, yeah, you can tell it's built for speed. I mean, the shape of it. Look at these fucking mirrors. Like, they're designed for aerodynamics. It's just a shame I'm not. You ch oh, the, the gear change. It's, um... You can tell you've changed gear, but it's not like clonk. It's like just a click. Not even a click, I suppose. But it's... Oh, it's just lovely. I can't wait till I say something else. It's just that sudden... I literally have no idea what to say about this. Or it's just... The power, it's, I've got a full 200 brake horsepower with ram air, I think it gets to like 206 or something. Uh, it weighs a fucking ton, but I mean, now it's moving, it weighs nothing, it's just, it's light as a feather, which is amazing. You'd think something like this, it'd weigh a fucking ton. No traction control on full. You can kind of feel a kick in there. It wanted to just go then, I'll be quite honest. Like, it was not going to hang around. Right, is it good for filtering? Whip-wise, no. But you just roll past everything. It doesn't care. Literally, just couldn't care less. It's heating up very quick, I'll say that. Overall... I'll say... It. It's very bent over, I'll say that. I'm already feeling it in my back. But it might be because I'm doing, like, no miles an hour. Close the visor and hope I can actually go fast enough to have a reason to close the visor. Shit, what's actually going on here? Water leak? Oh, that's sewage. Oh, nasty. The note to self. Go the other way when doing a review because Long Stratton is nout but bloody traffic. I've got a fucking police van behind me, which is not my idea of fun. Apparently I'm riding economically. There's actually a light that tells me so, which is pretty nice. So I'm probably about to annihilate that as soon as I get the opportunity. Unless the uh, van behind me can hear, in which case I'm not doing shit. Because now my sun visor's dirty and covered in shit water. Alright, let's see what I can do. Fucking hell! <laughs> oh shit, that was 90. I mean, um, 60. I'm still running economically! Sixth gear roll on. Not a care in the world. It just goes. Once you get going, the uh, seat position's not so bad. I mean, you can really move back. It's not really, really does your back in. But you move forward, and it's, you know, it's all right. Oh, you indicate when you turn off. Lovely. Is this the one that goes on to the dual carriageway or not? See if it is, I'm about to have some fun. Oh, shit, you know. That feels really weird. But so right at the same time. No, it's not. God damn it. And there's a caravan! I'm getting past that fucker, I'll tell you that now. This screen's actually working surprisingly well. But, like, I mean, there's a little bit of wind, but there's not much. Stuck behind a lorry, stuck behind the caravan, with stuff coming the other way. 
there's not a lot of vibration. I mean, there's a little kind of tingly bit through the pegs, but it might actually be the road because the roads are shit. <laughs> so that's not a throttle. That's a, a mechanism attached to your funny bone. Where the more you pull it back, the more it makes you giggle, apparently. Apparently! God, I've been up for 15 minutes already. I haven't fucking gone anywhere! I was only hoping everyone was going to pull over just let me past, but... I think I have a dual carriageway a mile ahead. Oh, God, I've still got to do a mile! Which, at the speed I'm doing, equates to just over a minute, but still! There's the roundabout. After that's the dual carriageway. Suspension's actually quite nice. It's firm. But, like, sporty firm, but it's not overly firm. Do you get what I mean? It's kind of... It just gently smooths out these bumps, which is quite nice, considering the riding position. Yes, go on, buddy! Jesus Christ! I wasn't even in top gear! Fucking I'll get wheelies! Shit! Oh my face! Holy fuck! This thing's got torque for fucking days! Fuck me, I think it's like over a hundred foot pound of torque and you can fucking tell! Cause it just eats your fucking head! I better turn around and go back- Wait, what?! No fucking way! Holy shit! This thing put me in Suffolk in like ten minutes! Fucking hell! Um. Review, right, uh... Fuck me! This fucking power is immense! It's, it's fucking wheeling in six! I'm putting that bit out. This is just stupid. And I'm fucking glad I did it. Holy shit! I just realised I was looking at the temperature. I'm like, why is everyone doing less than 70 on your carriageway? I'm doing 90. Fuck me. Oh, my fucking back, though. Oh, you bastard. I mean, once you get used to the fucking feel of it, it actually corners quite nimbly. Well, I don't know about the tyres. I've got traction control. Why am I worried about the tyres? If you can st like if you're one of those people with an iron back and you can stand the um God that was so smooth. Uh if you're one of those people with an iron back and you can stand the you know angle how forward it is, it's lovely. Like I can't fault it. You could tour all day on this, it's just fucking amazing. like the seat's really comfy. Um the pull, well what's that need? That's fifth gear, that's not even 6,000 revs. That's fucking insane. It's literally like someone's grabbing your face and shoving it back. This doesn't make you go forwards. <coughs> it makes the world go backwards. Shit. I realise that I've just ruined myself because I now have to go back on the bandit which has less than half the power and 20 foot pound less torque. And 
know that it's only 150cc smaller than this. Well, it's a 14, what? 140 something. I think it's mine as a 1249. It takes a lot to turn that eco mode off, I'll fucking tell you that now. It's like, the, it's turbine smooth, it's just, grab it, and it goes, whoof, and that's it. That is the end of the day for you. It's just, like, not the end of it. If you've never heard of the bike, the MTT Y2K, look it up. It's powered by a helicopter turbine. And it's immensely smooth because of it. It does like 52,000 revs. This does 10 and a half before it hits a red line. And it feels immensely smooth at like 4,000. It's insane. The pull on it. It pulls like David Tennant at a Doctor Who convention. I would love to have this on a bit of runway and just open it up. And I mean really open it up. Have they not got out of the car yet? If you've... If you've uh, Jesus Christ. If you don't have any points on your license, if you have a Kawasaki dealer near you who's got one of these, if you're over 25, no, 23, sorry, I'm, I'm not even 25, get one of the, like, take it out for a spin, even if you take it out for 15 minutes, just do it, because I feel I've actually got a sad face now, because I know I'm not going to be able to ride anything like this ever again. Well, I'm not going to be able to afford this on my fucking salary at the moment, let's put it like that. Alright, now I've got the boring shit out of the way. Let's just see what it sounds like station, shall we? <laughs> Fuck me. That noise is exceptionally reminiscent of something that should leave you dead. It's got a nice power to it. It's got smooth torque. It irons out these bumps like you wouldn't believe and if I owned one, I wouldn't be able to resist the temptation to just constantly find a straighter road, a longer road, and just cane it. And it's not going to do me or this any good. How would I review this? Or how could I put it into words? Nimble behemoth that spins the world backwards and is way more nimble than it should be. With a little warning thing underneath that says, only for people with titanium spines, because I think more, I think I'm now about four inches shorter than I was before I grabbed the throttle. Does this get my seal of approval? It does, on the condition you've got a back made of fucking diamond. Clutch is fucking heavy, actually. I'll tell you what. Oh. I'm glad that's not my clutch hand, or I'd be fucked. I have come to the conclusion, working at how fast I was going, and I've been sat in this traffic for a while, that this isn't a motorcycle; it's a fucking time machine. Because you know how the Concorde, you used to like, fly and land before you actually set off. This is the same fucking thing. It's the only way I can explain how all the traffic ended up that far behind me. Originally I was like, oh, I don't know if I liked this, but I'm getting closer to having to give it back, and I don't want to give it back. I mean, I wouldn't mind stopping, getting off, resting my back a bit, and then getting back on it. But I don't like it. Like, I wouldn't carry on for a long time because I wouldn't like ease my back out of it, which admittedly, being like that, fucking perfect. The gearbox is actually a lot smoother than I thought it was. It must have just been me. Ah, uh, no, it's between first and second you got that nice little click. You didn't get like a clunk, you got a click. Everything else is straight through, like nothing. There's the biggest fucking queue of traffic. They're digging a hole, but there's like two miles of traffic each way. I think I spent about 45 minutes just in that. It fucking pulls, doesn't it? Oh yeah, really does. Yeah. In traffic though, it's really bad on your back, <laughs> which I found after about the first yeah, mile. I think every one of those, everybody took our eyes from it. Raise them up an inch, yeah. and it gives you that release off your wrist. Oh, I can imagine it'll help. They weren't overly bad, but it's, like I said, out of traffic it was lovely, but in traffic it... That was insane. Okay, so you may have heard the guy say, excuse me, you can get risers for it, that, r rise it about an inch. Honestly, I think that would make all the difference. Um, the price is surprisingly cheap. Also, sorry. 
another one. The price is surprisingly cheap. For just over 11 grand, you can get a 1400cc rocket ship that will ro reverse the rotation of the Earth. In fact, the only reason the Earth wasn't spinning backwards is there was probably someone doing the same fucking thing going another way, keeping it stable. Going back on this, it feels really small now, it's like really... Well, it's not nimble, it actually feels less nimble. It feels really tall and vibrationally, but it's not. It's just... it's just what it is. Would I recommend buying it as an alternative to something like, something like the Hayabusa or the Blackbird? Maybe. If you're only going to use it for like long speed runs, then yes. If not, and you want to do like long touring, I would actually go for the GTR 1400. It's the same engine, slightly detuned, slightly more mid-range torque. Um, still goes like a goddamn spaceship. You need to kind of weigh up what do you need it for. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five overall because it was comfy, it was smooth, it was fast, it was just a bit low on the old handlebars. I mean, you can get accessory risers apparently, not actual Kawasaki bits. If you buy one from there, which is Sea Star Superbikes in Newton Flotman, they've got the last green one because I'm going to make them in green anymore. £200 off list price, I'll put details here, and he's going to throw in a Scorpion exhaust as well, which I think would just be a brilliant idea. We're going to go for a ride, and I'm going to bail out. Cheers.